Hi everyone, this is Ur. In this video, we will add rate limiting into our Next14 app. Recently, WebDog Cody is one of the favorite channels that I, I like. I love watching him and he got DDoSed. There are some solutions to prevent it. He find it and he switched to Cloudflare and DigitalOcean. His application was running on AWS. This is just an alternative so that you can put some rate limiting. It won't fully prevent DDoS, but it will probably help a lot because these cloud providers that you run your Next14 app will bill you based on the execution time because our uh, server actions is just a serverless function. And if you do some long operations inside your server functions, if someone goes and uh, request your API too much, you will get charged so quickly. For example, in Vercel, you have free tier. And if you reach at some execution time, you will need to go to Pro. After you switch over Pro, you will still need to pay for the extra execution time. But if you had rate limiting, which it can help you to stop execution if IP address has exceed the rule you set. In our case, it will be five. So if we get five requests from same IP address in one minute, we will stop executing the function early. So we won't do any DB operations, etc. Let's take a quick look at the demo. So I have a very basic UI here and I can add some to do here and to do edit. Let's try one more, one more. And you can see that I got rate limited. It says check back in 60 seconds. Even though I hit the API and this function runs, it will early return. So that's the idea. That's better. You can see that I'm still able to send requests, which I can't prevent it. But what we can do is just early return so that our function won't execute it. Its execution time will be shorter. So yeah, it will definitely help. In this tutorial, we will use Dragonfly. It's an alternative to Redis and they claim to be 25 times faster than Redis. One of my other favorite channel in YouTube is Theo. I love watching him. And in, in his latest video, I learned that Redis remove open source and, and we don't know what will happen to Redis in the future. And we don't also know what will be happen to the services that uses Redis underline like Upstash. So that's why Dragonfly is an open source and it has 22K stars, almost 23. Anyway, so we will use this. Let's learn how can we do that. Even if you use a Node.js as your server, this approach will work. So you don't have to use Next14. Even if you, you are using Node.js, the logic behind this is same. Now, the rate limiting part. So for that, we will need to use a Dragonfly. We have already opened this website. So let's go to Docs getting started, install with Docker. So we will use Docker to start a Dragonfly container on Linux. Two way to run this, one for Linux, one for macOS. I think you can run this command if you are using a Windows because it has WSL, so virtual Linux inside. I'm not sure. I'm on a Mac OS. I will copy this and open up a new terminal and paste this command. It says listening on port 6379. Now what I'll do is create a new file called redis.ts. Here we will need to initialize our redis client. That's why we need to install redis first. We can type npm i redis and we will import create client from redis and then we will create a new variable called redis client create client and we can pass some options here like like password we can leave it blank but if you would use a cloud service we would have to pass some configuration so that our application would connect to this client and we can call a function called on and when we have an error we can just log it it's easy and we can check if redis client is open and if it's not open we can say redis client dot connect 
then just return the Redis client like this. Let's go back to our actions and implement rate limiting. Let's start with add to do. We will need to get the IP address of the user from headers and we can get the IP like this. So we will import headers from next headers. We either get X forwarded for or X real IP. And if forwarded for is exist, we use that. If really IP is exist, we use that. Otherwise we return null. So since this logic is not belong to here actions, we can move this into helpers.ts and let's export it from there. And now inside add to do, I can do const IP equals to get IP and we will we will import it from helpers like this. And we can early return if IP is not exist. And now we should check if this IP address is in our in memory cache in Redis memory. We can do const current try client, a uh, Redis client. This comes from lib slash Redis. And we can call get function and pass IP but it's an async operation. Let's put await. As you can see, it's either a string or null. Let's make it a number. If it's a non-value, so not a number value, it will become zero. And now we can check if current try is bigger than, bigger or equal to four, which means that user has tried, tried it for five times. We will return red try after one minute. That's great. If user passed this condition, we will increase the current try and set it into Redis. We can do it by await Redis client set and we can pass a key here, which is our IP and a value current try plus one and some options. This is for expiration and this is 60 seconds. That's great. Then we are just returning a, a, a success message. But this line may throw an error, so we can wrap this with a try catch, but that's fine. Let's not deal with it. That's the whole thing that we need. Uh, since we will use this in every function that we want to rate limits, we can we can cut this from here and have a function const check rate limit like this and paste it here. And at the end, we can return success true. And before doing anything, we can call check rate limit function. And if success is false, we can return the response. This is that is that easy. So I will copy this part and go to update to do and paste it here as well. Perfect. So we should be good. Go back to our next Next.js app. Let me check if I can add more to do's. OK, rate limit exceeded to retry after one minute. And yeah, there is one mistake that I made. So let's get rid of this equal so that we can add five, five item. Yeah, as you can see, after a five try, I can make any modifications to the DB. So now Railway, by the way, it's a paid app and it's not serverless. You could check their pricing here. It's it's very cheap. OK, I'm logged in my account and I will say Dragonfly here and select this. And it asks a bunch of questions, blah, blah. I will say deploy. OK, it's deploying. I have some variables. For the variables, I will copy Dragonfly and paste it into my env file and go to my redis.ts and I will pass URL and it will be Dragonfly URL like this. Now I can close the local local Redis. We don't use it anymore. Go back to my app. So let's try. Now it works. Everything is great. So I don't I don't use a local Dragonfly instance and it's it's in a railway. That's great. So let's actually have a PostgreSQL instance there as well. So what I'll do is go to railway and close this one, this one as well. And I will click on new database add PostgreSQL and it's it was spinning up a PostgreSQL. It is that easy. I love Railway. 
I hope the pricing will stay same. PostgreSQL is pinned up as well. I can go to variables and copy my database URL, change this URL with the one that I get. So yeah, I will remove those services. That's why I can show it to you. Don't show your keys to anyone. So I will close my app and spin it up like this. Go to localhost 3000. But I will probably get an error because we didn't push our schema into that database. Yeah, as you can see, relation to do does not exist. So what I'll do is go to a new terminal and next the result kit push PG like this. And I will say yes, changes are applied. And now when I refresh, everything seems fine. It's empty because we are not using our local PostgreSQL container anymore. It's in the railway. So let's try to add a to do. Okay, it's great. One more, one more. And we have rate limited. So everything is fine. And we have learned how to set up a rate limiting. It was easy. We get IP. We have look for the current tries. And if it's bigger than the four or or any anything you specified the early return so your function will not execute long operations like updating database or inserting database into something etc so it's good anyway so thank you for watching this video i hope it it was helpful to you i'd be appreciated if you subscribe to the channel and this was ur and let me know if you want to see any other content, you can type it in the comments. I would like to record a video about it. Okay, bye bye.